real quick. 90 day fiance the other way. I had to talk about this because I just caught up on the first episode of the new season. I think this is like season, I don't know, three, five, whatever. But this particular couple, this girl, Ariel and Biniam, okay? Ariel and Biniam, all right? What a shit show. This guy is in Ethiopia. So Ariel is the American and Biniam is the foreigner, okay? So if you don't know about 90 Day Fiance, it's a show on TLC. And it is basically a premise of either, you know, Americans that are uh, pursuing or in active relationships with people who live outside of the United States. Um, and either they are going to bring their, you know, they, you know, 90 day fiance goes through the courting process. Um, and then there's 90 day after the 90 days and then 90 day the other way. They just, they've made all these different franchises, but 90 day the other way is about the Americans going to live abroad overseas and the respective countries, um, of their significant others. So Ariel is a young uh, white woman who's from Princeton, New Jersey. And, um, this season she goes more in depth into her life. So the first season, all we really saw was her, you know, basically it looked like she went on vacation to Ethiopia. You know, she was traveling the world, finding herself. She saw this really hot uh, Ethiopian guy with locks and fell in love with him, you know, fucked him like a jackrabbit for three months and boom, she was pregnant. So she went back uh, home for a couple months and then she ended up deciding to just move to Ethiopia to have the baby over there um, because she wanted the child to be with his father. So, which is crazy. Um, you would think that she would want him to come to the United States, but you know, we never really found out why she wasn't trying to bring him to the United States in the first season. So the second season starts, uh, the other night. Um, and she reveals that, you know, she, when she met her current baby daddy, Beniam, that she's living in Ethiopia with, she had just, it was three months after her divorce of her first husband. So the whole first season, we don't even know this bitch was married before. Okay. She was, I guess, 29 when she met him or yeah, 30. I don't know. This girl is, must be in her early thirties now. She's got to be, um, because she says that she met the first husband when she was backpacking in Ecuador, I believe, or Argentina. I think he's either from, I think he's from Argentina, either Argentina or Ecuador, the first husband. Um, Okay. First husband from Ecuador. So she was out finding herself after high school, traveling the world. Um, and she meets this really hot, um, local to where she is. Um, Argentina, I guess that's where she is. Argentina, Ecuador, whatever. Um, falls in love with him. Um, and within six months she marries him and brings him back over to the United States. Well, she decides that she's going to stay. She stays married to this guy for 10 years. So, um, you know, fast forward 10 years later, she's divorced this guy and she's now in Ethiopia. Once again, traveling the world, finding herself again. Um, and she falls in love with another freaking foreigner. So this woman TLC has let us know now that this woman is revealing her pattern. Um, but even more juice to the story. This woman has decided that, you know, she needs, you know, she's in a foreign country. She doesn't have any friends. She has no family there. She has her baby there. That's about it. That's the only other, you know, white skin she sees is this child that she's had by this Ethiopian man. So she says she wants to invite her best friend out there and her best friend's going to come and stay with them at the house for a couple of days so they can, best friend can get to know the husband or baby daddy and the baby and you know, see the surroundings because she's called best friend, you know, throughout the course of the year of her living in Ethiopia um, and cried about her relationship. And who y'all think this best friend is? Ding, 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 ding. You guess the ex-husband. How the fuck do people stay friends with their ex-spouses? I don't understand. I have only seen one black person that has talked publicly about being friends, hanging out, kicking it chilling, shooting the shit with the ex-spouse. I just don't get it. Baby mama, baby daddy, maybe. But someone that you were married to, I just don't understand. But nonetheless, this chick Ariel has invited the fuckery over to Ethiopia, okay? She's invited her best friend slash ex-husband to come and stay in the house with her baby and baby daddy all of his sisters and 
relatives are telling her, this is not good. This, this is not normal. And we don't do this here. Well, just a word to his, Benham's family. We don't do that shit here either. Okay. We don't do that shit. Black people here in America. We don't do that shit. We don't stay best friends with our exes. That's just not normal. So I expect some shit to happen this season. I expect that, um, her baby daddy, Benham is going to be breaking his dick off all around Addis Ababa <laughs> because he don't know what is behind her intentions of inviting her ex-husband to the house like who where is it okay to do that only in a white woman's mind because black people don't think like that like that's just my opinion maybe some black people do but only a white woman would think it's okay for her to invite her ex-husband to another country thousands of miles away to come and meet her new boo to come and put a wrench in her new relationship. You call this man your best friend and you vent to him about your relationship. Word to the wise, if you want to stay in your relationship, you don't go talking to other people, most definitely your ex that used to stick dick in you about what your new man is or is not doing to you, okay? That's your first mistake and that's gonna be the ultimate downfall of any relationship. But that's definitely gonna be a downfall of her relationship. Not to mention, her family don't want her over there. She's from Princeton, New Jersey, okay? Her dad's a doctor, her mom's a nurse. Um, why, and, and her baby daddy is a dancer. A dancer and a rapper and an artist. And, and he don't work a nine to five. He doesn't do anything you know, nine to five-ish, blue collar-ish. This man is um, living his dreams right now. He's, he's got it fucking made. Um, but it just really shined a light, you know, t for me. I was just like, oh, a light bulb. That's why he's not coming to America. So she already had a K-1 visa for somebody else and it didn't work out. And she had to be responsible. And when you do those, if you watch the show, you'll find out that when you do those K-1 marriage visas, you are financially and shit physically responsible for the, that said, overseas uh, national for 10 years, for one decade, you are responsible for that person. So that is why she is in Ethiopia with her baby daddy, I presume. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's not in the U U.S. now since the first husband's 10 year period has expired. Um, and, you know, they're divorced and, you know, they've moved on from each other. But, you know, I just wanted to talk about that because I just find this show to be a trip. And I just find their relationship to be just most of the relationships are pretty. You can see that they are fake at this point. I mean, eh. You know, some of them, you know, they're just really trying. They're putting on for the cameras and, and other ones. It's like, okay, y'all might really be in love, but this isn't going to last. It's, it's not going to last at all. It's not. But hers, you know, marriage, longevity, it's just not there. You know, she married a, he, he's a, he, he is an adolescent mentally. I mean, as far as being a provider goes, um, her parents are taking care of them 100%. And... You know, if someone else's parents are taking care of you, if you can't provide for your own family, and she most definitely is not working there. She doesn't have a work visa. So, you know, her parents are 100% providing all of their needs. So this relationship is a recipe for disaster, but please believe I will be tuning in. I will not be turning away because, I mean, it's a shit show, and I can't wait to see what unfolds. Um, I can't wait to see what he does um, because I know... He's going to be cheating on her because he's already assumed that she's going to be cheating with this ex. So, <laughs> I mean, why, why wouldn't he cheat? Like, it's, that's just obvious. That's just, that's the, that, that's what happens on the show. Like, he's going to cheat, you know, if he hasn't already. I'm sure he's tired of looking at her little pasty, nagging ass. Like, she's a nagging ass little bitch. Like, if you watch the show, she's a nagger. Um. And like most of the, you know, sorry, white women, most of the white women on this show, just completely and utterly uh, aloof and co just downright disrespectful to the culture. You know, and she had to live there for a year to really become accustomed to it. You know, she was not accustomed to the living conditions when she first got there. She just didn't understand how people could live in, you know, different conditions. You know, everything is not America. 
you are blessed to be an American, okay? But you don't take your snotty, nasty American attitude to another country and shit on what they have. And that is what a lot of Americans, well, 99.95% of the Americans on this show tend to do is shit on the other countries that they go to, their cultures, their customs, their food, their plumbing, um, their living quarters. Um, they're very disrespectful, but nonetheless, ratings, ratings palooza. So I will be watching. I hope you tune in too, so you can see the um, the shit show of 90 Day Fiance, 90 Day the Other Way, and the rest of them damn franchises they got on TLC because there's way too damn many. Deuces.